Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Pigments 5, and today's patch is called Vaporwaves, which we're kind of going back a little in time. We're not going to create something distant today, it's just more of a nice pad. Okay, there we go. Let's dry up our tears and let's make this pad. Okay, so this one is kind of fun to make, but there's some weird little interesting stuff we do have to keep an eye on. So basically this patch is made from the analog engine. We're not using two, but we are using the utility engine, two filters, and then a good amount of effects. So basically we can start off with the analog here. So we are targeting this guy. Okay, so we can change this to the analog, and as you can see here, we're using two saw waves, so we can bring the second one in the mix, and we're not doing any detune, anything like that, but we are doing some modulation on the fine and then adding some unison. So three voices here, the detune and the stereo are going to be, uh, well, the detune is going to be default. We're going to bring the stereo down more to the center. So bring the three and then bring this here to the center, something like that. Now, this fine tuning is a tiny amount. We're doing 0 0.06, right? So very, very small amount in LFO 1. So drag and drop this here and 0 0.06. This one does make a huge difference, <laughs> even though it's like a tiny little knob kind of moving. So we do need to change this rate a little bit. So LFO 1 is a triangle wave, so we can change it to the triangle. And then the rate's going to be 5.35, something like that. And then it's going to be triggered by free running. So I, I guess technically not triggered, right? Because it just it does this thing. And then since this is functioning as a vibrato, we don't really need this to be on smooth. We need this to fade in, right? If we hit a note, we want it to kind of slowly fade in the LFO to start the vibrato. So click here on smooth, go to fade, and this is an amount of 401 milliseconds, something like that. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of really all we have to do for this engine. We should actually jump into the filters because that's kind of, kind of really the important thing about making a sound like this. So... The first filter is going to be the Jupiter 8, and it's going to be the Low Pass 12. Now, by default, where this, this cutoff knob is manually set is 150 hertz, so we can bring that down right here. And this is getting modulated by an envelope and also by the first macro. So we can do the first macro at 0 0.07, drag and drop, so 0 0.07. Seven, there we go. Now it's a very small amount because this pad really lives in a certain range and <clears throat> using a huge <laughs> cutoff range is gonna be kind of ridiculous for this. So with that being said, the first macro is gonna be cut off low pass and it has a little bit of value like that. So cut off dash LP, that's fine. I spell that right, sweet, okay. <laughs> so the next thing is going to be the envelope two so we can drag and drop that there. Now, this is an amount of 0 0.08, so also tiny little movements right here. So all of those little tiny screws that kind of really add things up. So we should kind of check out our envelopes because we're at that spot. Okay, so the first envelope for our VCA is going to be 208 for the attack. We can bring that up here to 08, and then a little bit of curve here at negative 1, 2. So negative 1. 2, something like that. Our decay is going to be 2.91, 2.9. One, I guess a little bit further, right? 2.91, yeah. 2.91, that's fine, that's fine there. Sustain's gonna be about half-ish way, right? So 0 0.516, so pretty much 0.5 for the most part. And then our release is gonna be 2.50, so two and a half seconds, right there. Now the second envelope, as you guessed it, is not gonna be actually curves, it's, this one's gonna be linear, which is kind of strange for me, but I think it sounds better for the filter. So the attack is 1.81 seconds right there. And then no curve, like I just said. And decay is going to be 421, which, <laughs> God, that's a missed opportunity. I, that seems like that happens to me a lot. And then the sustain, I believe it's still halfway. It's what the knob looks like. Yep, about halfway. And then our release is going to be, it always covers right when I'm looking at it. Okay, it's going to be 2.75 seconds. Okay, 2.75. There we go. Okay. So we're pretty much in the ballpark there. Now, if you notice how it builds up really quite a lot in the low end there. Like, it's cool there's some low end, but it just really muddies up the sound here. So 
So that is why we're using this matrix 12 high pass. So the filter routing, filter one spits the signal out and goes into filter two. So now we need to load up this matrix 12. Let's turn this on and go to the matrix 12 and we're using the high pass 12. So the, uh, the cutoff is gonna be at 178 Hertz. So 178, something like that. And then this is modulated by two things. One is gonna be an LFO and the other one is gonna be the second macro at 0.15. So we can drag and drop here and bring this down to 0.15 and then relabel this macro as cutoff dash HP. So we can kind of control both. And then this here is LFO2 at 0 0.03. So it's a very small amount, but it does make a difference. So there's a lot of these things on this patch. So 0 0.03, right? Down over here, 0 0.03. And before we get there, we need to turn on the keyboard. I just saw that. So keyboard tracking all the way to the top for the Juno or the Jupiter 8 filter. That will uh, change the patch significantly if you don't have that on. So make sure to turn that on. So back to the second LFO here. If we take a look at this guy, we're actually going kind of slow, I suppose. We're on free running as well. Sine wave, so let's change that here. So free running, we're on the sine wave, which is default. And then our rate is going to be 0 0.185. 0 0.185. Now with this added here, the low end is much more contained. Sounds a little bit better there. So that's pretty much all the stuff we have to do in this case. So now let me just double check here. I think we are all good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now the utility engine. So this is kind of part of the authenticity, I suppose. So this one is consisting of heater for the first sample. So we can click this guy and then let's find heater under hardware. I think it's up here. Heater. There we go. Now this guy is going to filter two and that's because this one is chopping off the highs and we kind of want the highs. So we're kind of skipping filter one and going straight to filter two, which is leaving the highs for the most part alone, right? So with that being the case, this volume is going to be actually modulated by the macro controlled via macro three. So we can bring the volume all the way down and then macro three is controlling us at 0.32. So macro three drag and drop at 0.32. So if we turn this guy off and we bring this macro three up, we kind of have that, which sounds like something heating up, or it sounds like my laptop fan's going kind of crazy. But anyway, we're going to call this noise, something like that. And then double check the volume, zero. Okay, that's cool. All right, so back to the utility engine here. The next one is going to be the analog noise, which is one of my favorite samples in uh, in this utility engine. It's just, it's the perfect default one, I feel. Also, filter number two, and then this value is going to be 0.31. So bring this all the way down. And 0.31, there we go, 0.31. So now we have both of these in here. We have that one and that one. So they're kind of working together. And normally I do the sub oscillator thing here, but uh, for this patch, it doesn't seem necessary. So we're gonna leave that alone. And now we can uh, jump into effects. We're pretty good there, yeah. Okay, jumping into effects. So basically we have an aux, we can disable that, disable B, and let's focus on A. So FXA, there's some weird EQ here because there's a lot of weird resonances that kind of happen in this patch. So these are kind of controlling those, uh, those peaks there. So if we go to effects and we go to our first bank, select our delay and let's go to uh, an EQ here. So we can turn on the uh, engine so we can hear, hear what's going on. Okay, so our first note here is gonna be the first one and that's gonna be 125 Hertz. So we can bring this down a little bit here. I'm kind of bring this down quite a lot. Cause this is the stuff that we're removing. We really don't need much of that. I don't believe I messed with the Q for this guy, 123. That should be default, I believe, yep. And then, so for the next one, this is going to be 594. So 500 and 94, and this is really just searching those resonances and just kind of bringing those down, kind of controlling them. That stuff's to bring that down. And I did mess with the cue for this guy, which is 248. Pretty close here. And that noise is loud. How loud is that? Oh, yes, yeah, because it's all the way. Let's bring that down a little bit. It's fine. Okay. So now the third band is going to be five, 365. So 300, just like the days of our planet right now in one fourth. 365. Okay, there we go. And we're bringing this down pretty substantially, negative 10. 
something like that. And then the Q is going to be 2.63. Okay, so that's kind of controlling these res resonances. I mean, we could have done a preset and copied and pasted, but I mean, for just one patch, I don't really think I need to save a preset for this here. Okay, next up is going to be a compressor. So let's go to compressor and the ratio is 299 over one. So pretty much three over one. And we're pretty much bringing our threshold to negative 14-ish. This is gonna come in handy. And our attack is two, and then I believe the rest is default, but we are increasing our output gain to nine one. Something like that. And for the most part, it's kind of a gentle compressor, right? It's not really doing too much, but it's kind of just controlling the dynamic range a little bit because this one can rise up kind of quick if you don't have that compressor on there. So next up, we have a delay. So click on our delay here. And this one is going to be at one over four, which is kind of perfect for this. And this is more of a slower tempo, right? I think, what are we at? Uh, 87. Yeah, so it's significantly slow. And then our dry wet's going to be 35. And this is macro four. So I guess we can just do that now. Drag and drop. And then 35. So bring this down and bring this up to 0.35. And don't forget to bring our macro up and then label this as effects because that's going to be our effects knob. Okay. So basically, bringing the feedback a little bit down here, and then our stereo split should be fine. Bring up some of the high pass and bring down some of the low pass. Pretty cool. <clears throat> and also here, the master volume is negative six, so this one has to be a little bit louder, especially using the Jupiter A filter kind of brings the volume down a lot, so we kind of have to compensate for that. So negative 607, so yeah, something like that. So we have this here. Now we go to our FX Bank B. So now we're kind of running this into a chorus, the Juno 6, and then we're running this into a flanger. So basically, next patch here, double click this and the Chorus Juno 6. And we can always bring our the dry wet down here because we're using like 58, which is quite a lot for this patch. But it sounds kind of cool. So 58. And you can also really hear the uh, the noise kind of going through the chorus. It's actually really cool. So our rate is going to be 0.40. I believe most of this is going to be default and depth 444. Yeah, looks about right. And the face is all the way at 180. So that's fine. Next up, we have the BL20 flanger. And I generally don't use this one too much when I, when I, uh, I don't have many purposes for it. But when you do have a purpose, this one is really nice to throw on there. So this is going to be kind of a smaller amount at 26. So we can bring this down and drag and drop and do 0.26. Right. something kind of like that. And then the last one is going to be the multi-filter. Now, this one is kind of really just here to, I guess, contain some of the top end. So if we had this bypassed, that stuff can kind of hurt at some point if we kind of held the keys down for a while. So this guy is going to be low past 12. Our cutoff is going to be about 7.8K, so something kind of around here. And just softening up just a little bit there. And I don't think we messed with the queue at all, 0.707. Nope, we're good there. Okay, we're pretty close here in the ballpark. The last thing we really need to do is go to our aux and turn this on. And also post effects, we want that on because we want our sound to be processed through the stack and then have the reverb applied. So with that being said, our send is about negative eight here, which is controlled via these, these this macro. So we can bring this here, drag and drop and kind of put it around up here. So now we have our reverb. So our pre-delay default 20, size 1.24, so a little bit larger, right? A little bit larger there. Our decay should be about the same stereo width. We're pretty much all the same here, just kind of increasing the size a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes you need to. And 
really that low end sounds kind of nice too, especially with that noise kind of just whooshing and wishing around. Then add a little flavor on top. I always switch to a minor key. Just what I do. Anyway, so that's pretty much how you make this patch. It's not too crazy, but like I said, those all those little details as far as like the small modulations on the cutoff here, the uh, the fine tuning on the or the LFO and the fine tuning over here, a lot of those things kind of really make this patch what it is. And yeah, that's pretty much all we are doing. I don't believe we did anything with velocity this time, so we should be good there. But yeah, if you'd like to get this patch for free, there's a link in the video description below, and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Update to Pigments 5, and we'll see you in the next video.